Dames en heren, in de zomer van 1992 ben ik naar Nederland gekomen. Ik wilde mijn leven in eigen handen nemen. Omdat ik me niet wil laten vangen in een toekomst die anderen voor mij uitstippelen. Zoals velen heb ik gekozen voor de bescherming van de vrijheid. Die vrijheid heb ik hier gevonden. Hier heb ik de mogelijkheden gekregen en aangegrepen voor mijn strijd tegen religieuze terreur. Ik ga Nederland verlaten. Verdrietig en opgelucht zal ik opnieuw mijn koffers pakken. Ik ga door. Dank u wel. Are you flattered that Ayaan Hirsi Ali not only read your book about the radical enlightenment, but was also very much influenced by it? And, uh, well, I don't know if she was uh, seriously influenced by it, but uh, of course uh, it means something to me that she read it and, and, and spoke about it to some people. Well, the day before she left for the United States, she visited the Spinoza house yes. in, uh, in The Hague. Yes. That must be... Uh, some kind of token or a sign or... Uh, well, it may be more to do with uh, her invoking the image of Spinoza as part of the general campaign in her politics. And uh, certainly she's done this also uh, in other ways on, on other occasions. Is it right that she calls on the Enlightenment? No, I, I don't think so. I think that... Um, I think that uh, one has to be very careful, I, I think, in the evaluation and, assess and assessments of her role and her relationship to um, the Enlightenment. And I did, was at uh, one stage more willing to have given a positive answer to this question than I now think is right. I thought that um, uh, some, some of the criticism of her that's appeared recently um, and has been linked to criticism of the um, Enlightenment as well. So I think the whole debate about Ayan Hirsi Ali and her relation to the Enlightenment is a very, very delicate and very important point. So I would give my own opinion in, in, in these terms. I would say that um, she uh, does, um, f in fighting for freedom of conscience and to limit the, um, the, uh, the power of religious authorities and of theology in human life, this is very much in line with the radical tradition, that's true. But in some of her statements and some of her tactics, she's been um, dogmatic and divisive in a way that I don't think is really in line with either um, uh, Spinoza's strategy for society or give, radical enlightenment more generally. Can you give an example of this dogmatism? I think her collaborating in that film with Theo van Gogh, for example, about what the Quran has to say about women was obviously deeply offensive to, to many people and was rather aggressive in, in its approach. But she's not a philosopher, she's an activist. That's right, but enlightenment is about how philosophy helps in its practical applications to general life. That's the essence of uh, enlightenment. What does reason, the philosophy of reason, teach us about how to organize society? So the philosopher, if you say in what in what sense is she an enlightenment figure um, and this is not necessarily a criticism of her activism maybe her activism is right for her in her context and I don't maybe particularly want to comment on that it may also be necessary in Holland today it's not, that's not for me to say I think because I'm a scholar and you're asking me about the enlightenment I'm simply saying that I don't think this is the language of the enlightenment and I don't think that it, it's um, that, the, that this, in this respect she can be regarded as an enlightenment figure the Vice Prime Minister André Rauwvoet is of the Christian Union yeah. and he talks about Enlightenment fundamentalism. Yes. Well, what do you think a, about it? I think this is an utterly stupid contradiction in terms uh, because the whole point about Enlightenment is that reason works through uh, discussion and dialogue. You might be wrong, so you have to begin with an impartial attitude, uh, listen to all the other points of view, and when all points of view are stated, you should choose the one that is most cogent and consistent and the, the points of view with more inconsistencies you should set aside. So this is the very the whole point about fundamentalism is that you don't listen to other points of view. You absolutely assert uh, one particular revelation or one particular point of view and you are not amenable to rational demonstrations that this might be wrong. So uh, enlightenment fundamentalism 
is a total contradiction in terms, and only an uneducated and rather stupid person could use such an expression. How far goes freedom of speech, for instance? Is uh, insulting a right? Ah, uh, such, such difficult questions, you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Arya Naya, who has been such an important champion of human rights, his first book was called uh, Defending My Enemy. And uh, as, as a young man, he marched with the Nazis through this uh, suburb of Chicago. And many survivors of the Holocaust and of Nazi uh, brutality were living there. He thought, uh, as a young Jewish man, he should join the march to show that if anybody's rights to freedom of expression are compromised mm -hmm. in any way at all, you never know where that might stop. I think that this is taking it rather too far. Full freedom of press and expression does not extend to certain things where it's clearly having a damaging effect on groups or on society. So if somebody stands up and preaches racial hatred, which in most uh, Western countries is illegal, you're not allowed to say, you know, I think uh, the Jews are utterly disgusting, we should continue uh, Hitler's work and kill the rest of them. Some people may think that, but you're not allowed to say that. But isn't it right that one isn't allowed to say such things because they are damaging things uh, which are completely irrational? And I think that that applies also to groups like the Nazis in that case of the march in Chicago. I, I actually believe that uh, Arya Naya is wrong to say this, that one shouldn't march with Nazis. One should say that preaching racial hatred is something that society shouldn't allow. Did Spinoza have a sense of humor? Does he has a sense of irony? Uh, well, he does. He, he, he makes jokes uh, here and there, but they, they usually have a, a slightly uh, mocking character, I would say, to them. Uh, I, I don't think Spinoza was quite as uh, modest or humble in his demeanor as, as some <laughs> biographers have portrayed him <laughs> as being. And uh, he, he seems to find certain kinds of what he thought of as stupidity as, as, as funny and makes jokes about it. And there's a very good example in the, the number of examples, but a good example in the correspondence is... Uh, is uh, his letters to uh, the Burgomaster uh, Boxdell, who was a firm believer in, in ghosts and in spirits, and they, there's several letters exchange, and the irony and sarcasm in the, uh, Spinoza's letters are, are very clear. At one point he asks him, well, whether he thinks that uh, one can distinguish clearly between male and female ghosts, for instance. Why is he so angry? Yeah, it's funny. Ja, wat ja. voelt u daar grappig aan? Nou, ik vond het leuk om, omdat jullie zo kuis zijn om jullie dan in een seksuele context te noemen. Christen, honden, geiten, uit, als iedereen doet mee. Jezus en Mohammed op een openbare play. Nee, ik mag niet wetsen, mijn excuses uit, ik zal voor straf me laten pijpen door de meiden van... Sorry. Waarom, waarom beledigt u zoveel? Ik beledig helemaal niet veel. Ontzettend veel. Ja, wie dan nog meer? Omdat we beledigd worden, bijvoorbeeld. Ja, nou, dat is toch niet zoveel. Zijn en heel veel godsdiensten. En jullie hebben steun aan elkaar. Dus ja, maar ook, ook heel veel godsdiensten. Waarom ja. doet u dat? Nou ja, omdat ik dat grappig vind. Omdat ik alles wat enige status heeft, heeft namelijk ook een vorm van macht. En macht corrumpeert altijd. Het moet geridiculiseerd kunnen worden. Als het niet meer kan. Dan krijg je de enge toestanden, een dictatuur. Maar meneer Theo, u bent een. Waarom moet dat gebeuren? Ja, ik doe ja, net ja, alsof ja. gevoeligheid en gekwetstheid en je beledigd voelen een voorrecht is alleen voor gelovigen. Denk ja, je als ik de tv ja, aanzet? Denk jullie niet dat. Wacht even, ik ga nog even zeggen. Oh, denk dat? jullie als okay. ik de tv aanzet dat ik niet dingen zie die me ergeren? Dat ik me niet beledigd zou kunnen voelen? Maar je ontwikkelt daar een schild voor. Dat doe je in een vrije samenleving, omdat je wordt geconfronteerd met dingen waar je het liever niet. Very much typical Dutch discussion, I would say. Yes, yes. Uh, it's fantastic. I, I've never seen a discussion like that um, in England and America. Not that I watch television very much, I must admit. Um, but uh, I found that quite fascinating. Quite fascinating. Uh, of course, um, our friend the stand-up comedian uh, has many good points to make and had won a great deal of support, I noticed, from the audience. It would be interesting to know how they, how they were selected. And uh, I think that the, his essential arguments were very good. And in that respect, he certainly had the better of the discussion. Nevertheless, I've got a certain amount of sympathy uh, for the three 
Muslim girls because it seems to me that there is a peculiar degree of preoccupation with the right to insult in the present debate in the Netherlands about freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And uh, many of the things that he actually says are deeply insulting, repulsive, and rather disgusting. <laughs> and uh, Why? I, Which I, 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 well, uh, some people, and not only women, but there are some men who have sufficiently delicate sensibilities not to want to hear sexual references in every single line, practically, and uh, who, who find uh, a, a, a very uh, gross way of describing things which is intended to ridicule, belittle, and to evoke feelings of disgust, a form of insult which is not really necessary in a discussion. I mean, what, what does it really add to the points that the man is making? And uh, if people have deeply felt feelings, uh, it seems to me that there, there should be a certain limit somewhere to the right to insult. An absolute right of, uh, of insulting people seems to me after all, um, the Jews have been one of the most insulted of peoples and religions in, by others in the 20th century, and uh, there are many Jews today who still feel a certain sensitivity about certain insults. Are they wrong to feel that sensitivity? I don't believe that they are wrong, and I think that uh, the same applies to every other sort of person. Um, certain kinds of insults are very uh, wounding, and if they're unnecessary to the discussion or the uh, So you think argument. that there's a distinction between, let's say, needless insults and necessary insults? Yes, I, I think sometimes. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, when somebody or some idea deserves to be attacked, it should be attacked. And if the person being attacked re regards these assertions and statements as insults, then that, that's too bad. I, I, I think it's very important not to allow... Um, any curbing on basic points or arguments on the grounds that they're offending somebody's sensibilities. That's ridiculous. And, and he has a, a very good point to make, I think, and sustains it very amusingly and very cleverly and very effectively. To inspire it. And, uh, well, I don't know if she was seriously influenced by it, but uh, of course uh, it means something to me that she read it and, and, and spoke about it to some people. Well, the day before she left for the United States, she visited the Spinoza house yes. in, uh, in The Hague. Yes. That must be uh, some kind of token or a sign. Or... Uh, well, it may be more to do with uh, her invoking the image of Spinoza as part of the general campaign in her... Dames en heren, in de zomer van 1992 ben ik naar Nederland gekomen. Ik wilde mijn leven in eigen handen nemen. Omdat ik me niet wil laten vangen in een toekomst die anderen voor mij uitstikkelen. Zoals velen heb ik gekozen voor de bescherming van de vrijheid. Die vrijheid heb ik... Politics. And uh, certainly she's done this also... Uh in other ways on, on other occasions. Is it right that she calls on the Enlightenment? No, I, I don't think so. I think that um I think that uh, one has to be very careful, I, I think, in the evaluation and, assess and assessments of her role and her relationship to um, the Enlightenment. And I did, was at uh, one stage more willing to have given a positive answer to this question than I know. Here found it. Hier heb ik de mogelijkheden gekregen en aangegrepen voor mijn strijd tegen religieuze terreur. Ik ga Nederland verlaten. Verdrietig en opgelucht zal ik opnieuw mijn koffers pakken. Ik ga door. Dank u wel. Are you flattered that Ayaan Hirsi Ali not only read your book about radical enlightenment, but was also very much I think is right. I thought that um, uh, some, some of the criticism of her that's appeared recently um, and has been linked to criticism of the um, Enlightenment as well. So I think the whole debate about Ayan Hirsi Ali and her relation to the Enlightenment is a very, very delicate and very important point. So I would give my own opinion in, in, in these terms. I would say 